Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Peak Designs Travel Backpack. And I feel like I'm a little bit late to the party with this one. It's been covered in so many videos already, but all the reviews have been really positive and the products that I've used from Peak Design in the past have always been really well designed and stylish. So I still really wanted to test this out to see how it compares with some of the other popular travel bags that we featured on the channel. So I went ahead and ordered one and I've been testing it out for the past couple of weeks. And so far I have to say I've been really impressed with just how many features this bag is able to offer as well as the build quality and the style but there are a few things that hold it back from being what I would say is the best all around travel bag. With that being said, there's still some great stuff to cover here and I'm really excited to walk through it with you guys. So let's just jump in and take a closer look at the Peak Designs Travel Backpack. Starting out with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. It has a very modern, clean and sleek look. The bag is offered in the black color that you see here and in a gray version. Both colors look pretty good on the bag, but I slightly prefer the black just because it makes it look a little bit slimmer. For the materials, the company has chosen to use a 400D nylon on the outside that's made out of recycled plastic and it seems to offer a good amount of weather resistance. On top of that, the bag has well-protected zippers all around. One big impact that comes from the durability of the materials is on the weight. Unfortunately, the bag does come in at around four and a half pounds when it's empty, which is really, really heavy for a travel backpack, especially when you're trying to meet some of those stricter weight requirements on international airlines. So that was one big concern that I had right off the bat with the bag. Besides that, the capacity of the bag should work well for carrying on to most airlines, both domestic and international. In the current size that you see here, it comes in at 35 liters. That's the default size, but you do have the ability to expand it out to 45 liters if you need a little bit more space. When the bag is expanded out, it is likely gonna be a little bit trickier to carry on as it will be a little bit too tall, and it's also likely gonna surpass any weight restrictions that most airlines are gonna have. But if you keep the bag compressed down, the 35 liter size is gonna work really well and is gonna be able to hold enough stuff to travel for at least two to three weeks. Continuing along the outside, I was happy to see that the bag includes two external water bottle compartments. These offer a nice amount of space. Currently what I have in here is the same water bottle that you've seen in all my other travel bag videos. These compartments offer a nice amount of elasticity. They have this little elastic here that comes out. So if you have a little bit thicker of a water bottle or if you wanna stick something like a tripod in here, there should be plenty of space. I also like how deep the compartments go. So if you have something a little bit taller, it should be able to sit in there comfortably without falling out. Another nice touch on the outside, especially considering that this is a little bit of a larger bag, are that there are grab handles on each side of the bag, making it very easy to pick up and put into an overhead storage compartment. Or if you wanna carry the bag like a briefcase, you should be able to do so for a little bit. The handles are all pretty comfortable to hold and made out of a durable material. The ones on the top and the bottom seem to have the same seatbelt like material that we seen in bags such as air and then I also like that the handles on the side sit pretty flush against the bag so that you don't have anything sticking out awkwardly the last thing I'll mention while we're on the front is that the bag has these nice durable loops that are located all around the front and sides of the bag and these are meant to pair with these straps that kind of hide here at the bottom there's a nice metallic closure here that keeps these secure and you can pop that open and you can pull these straps out and I really like the flexibility that this gives you and how you can organize a bunch of different gear so these have these simple metal hooks that you can detach and then you can move these straps all around either the front if you want to attach something like a sleeping bag or a yoga mat they also go down across the bottom if you want to attach a sleeping bag here or a tripod if you want to attach them across the top maybe you can use it to hold something like a larger jacket so really like the versatility offered by these straps and these come included with the bag so a really nice bonus feature that allow you to kind of configure the bag in a lot of different useful ways Jumping into the straps and the back pedaling, this is definitely one of the areas of the bag that has gotten the most attention, and that's understandable given how unique the system that Peak Design has implemented is. However, I'm not sure I'm crazy about how it works in actual use. Starting off with the back pedaling, there is a nice amount of padding here. There's some elevation to create air channels to help prevent moisture from building up while you're using this throughout the day. The padding isn't quite as elevated or soft as I would typically like to see, but it hasn't been uncomfortable. Another nice touch on the back paneling is this large strap that they have included that allows you to carry the bag like a duffel bag. You can also use this as a luggage pass through if you wanna rest this on a suitcase while you're traveling. I don't know how much I would actually end up using that considering the size of the bag. I would probably not travel with an additional suitcase, but still nice to have the flexibility to at least carry this like a duffel bag. And so when you're ready to use this as a backpack and you wanna bring the straps out, Peak Design has a good system here with magnets so you can lift these flaps up and then easily slide the straps straps out. They have these little hinges at the top that make sliding the straps in and out very easy. Once the straps are out, the magnets pull the back paneling back down. And so the straps themselves, unfortunately, are probably the weakest area of the bag. They're just not really that comfortable to wear, especially considering that this is a really big bag. 
They're a little bit on the thinner side. They have some padding. There's no sort of mesh lining on the inside to help prevent moisture from building up. They're also a little bit more narrow that I would like to see for a bag of this size. So they did tend to dig in a little bit as I was wearing it for a longer period of time throughout the day. The straps do include an adjustable and removable sternum strap that has this unique metallic clip that allows you to easily attach it to the other side. But I don't really like how this sternum strap works. It kind of pulls the straps inward at an awkward angle that kind of digs into your shoulder and it doesn't really help that much with distributing the weight. So most of the time I ended up just not using this and either leaving it clipped on here to one of the straps or just removing it completely. If you have the bag fully loaded out and you need a little bit more support, the bag also has a hideaway waist belt that just rolls out pretty easily, has a similar system to the buckle that we saw here on the straps that makes it very easy to kind of rotate this in and out. The waist belt has a similar style to the strap, so it's kind of thin, it has some padding, so it does offer a little bit of support. There's also a small elastic pocket on one of the waist straps to allow you to store some smaller accessories that you wanna to get to quickly. To close the waist belt up, they have this simple metallic buckle system, which I'm not too crazy about. It feels like an area of the bag that could potentially tear after a lot of years of use. And I also feel like it's just a little bit uncomfortable to get in and it doesn't feel quite as good as some of the bigger buckles that we've seen on better waist belts from companies like Tortuga and Air. The waist belt does offer a fair amount of support, but most of the time I would prefer not to use it. So in that case, you could just leave it tucked away. But one thing I notice is that when you have the waist belt tucked away, there does tend to be a little bit of a bulge if you don't really carefully place it in here. So it does tend to press up against your back and it's a little bit uncomfortable to wear. So even though this is a really clever system in theory to kind of put everything away quickly, I really would have just preferred to have the ability to remove the waist straps instead. The last thing I'll mention before moving on is that there is this little hidden luggage tag area on the back paneling where you, it includes this little card that allows you to place your name and phone number and you can probably pair this with other luggage tags that you might have, but just a nice little feature here so that if the bag gets separated from you, you can kind of have some of your contact info. Jumping into the different organizational options, the first thing I'll mention is that the bag has lots of different ways to access the main compartment. This is something that I really, really came to love, especially having the ability to access the main compartment from the side has just been super convenient to reach in and grab either something like my toiletry bag or a jacket. This also pairs nicely with a lot of the accessories that Peak Design has created for this bag. Unfortunately, we won't be looking at any of those in this video, but even without those accessories, having this ability to open the bag from the sides has been really, really helpful. First up on the front, there's a very simple quick access compartment with a surprising amount of space. Currently what I have in here is my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. And then I also have a lightning cable to charge my phone. So a nice amount of volume here, as you can see, I can almost fit my whole hand. On the inside, the material is pretty soft. It's not fleece lined or anything like that, but still a nice area to put something like your phone or if you need to just throw a bunch of stuff in here quickly while you're going through TSA, it's gonna be very easy to get to. Next up is a larger accessory compartment that has a lot of nice internal organization. And on top of that, the bag has a nice flat opening here, making it very easy to pack out and see everything that's in this area. So plenty of space here for larger accessories or if you wanna put something like a jacket or an additional pair of shoes, they should be able to fit in here okay. Currently what I have in here is just my collapsible nomadic laundry basket. Then I also have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. And then here towards the bottom, I have my Goruck wired up which has all my smaller dongles and tech accessories. So really like how deep this compartment goes. On top of that, there's two flatter organizational zippered compartments on the back side of the compartment. These don't have too much volume, but they will be a good place to put smaller accessories like cables or dongles. And then at the top, there's an additional zippered compartment that has mesh, making it very easy to see what's on the inside. Because these are flatter, all I really have in here are something like my Field Notes notebook. And then I also have my little Gerber Shard multi-tool. On the flap for this compartment, you have some additional zippered areas. So here in this bottom one is a larger, flatter compartment that might be good for something like a laptop charger. And then at the top, there is another larger compartment. This one has a little bit more volume than the other ones that we've looked at. So I really like how much this comes out, making it a little bit better for some of those thicker accessories. I also like the kind of Hypalon mesh used here, making it very easy to see what's in the compartment. And it also gives it a very durable feel. And so plenty of space in this compartment. Currently what I have here floating around is just my GoPro Hero 3 Plus. And then I like that this compartment has some smaller slip pockets on the inside to help provide that extra bit of organization for smaller accessories. And so here in this smaller slip pocket all the way to the left, I just have my Apple Magic Mouse. And then there's a few slots for something thinner like a pen or a stylus, which is what I currently have here. And then there's another larger slip pocket next to that where I currently just have 
a USB-C hub for my Touch Bar MacBook Pro. So I really like how much flexibility Peak Design is given in this area to kind of organize and separate all of your stuff. There's maybe more compartments that I would typically need, but it's nice that since most of them lie down flat, if you don't want to use them, they just kind of stay out of the way. And then another interesting feature in this compartment is that if you want to access the main area of the bag or you don't want to use these pockets for much, there's actually this zipper here that allows you to pull this up and then you can either roll this away if you don't want to use it so you just have more space for the main area or if you just want to access something quickly without having to flip the bag over and access it from the larger compartment on the back, you can easily get in, grab something, zip this back up, and you should be good to go. In addition to the side access that we saw earlier, there is also a full clamshell opening to allow you to get into the main compartment for easy packing and organization. So opening this up, this opens up very easily and wide. Plenty of space here. As you can see, I have all the same items that I featured in all my other travel bag videos. And so jumping right in, the first item that I have here is my nomadic toiletry bag. Then I have a pair of Toms, which I take with me on every trip. And then another simple flatter pair of sneakers. Then I also have my smaller packing cube that has all my t-shirts, socks, and underwear. And then I have my larger double-sided packing cube that has my jeans and dress shirts and larger clothing items. And so now with the compartment empty, you can see just how much space is offered here. I didn't even have it expanded out and there was still leftover space. So a very large 35 liter bag. I like the simplicity of the main compartment without the accessories. It's just very easy to toss a bunch of cubes in here. If you do wanna try out some of Peak Design's accessories, they do seem to have a lot of lash points so that you can attach everything properly. And so if you wanna access the camera cube and have that not slide around so you can access it from the side, there seem to be different ways that you can kind of attach everything. And then at the bottom of the main compartment, there's two additional zippered pockets for smaller accessories or if you wanna to toss things like your socks or underwear. These are actually on the same flap that we saw on the outer organizational compartment. So pulling this down, you can kind of see this is the other compartment we were just looking at. So you have a lot of different options in how you want to use these pockets. As you can see, it kind of goes through. So they share the same amount of space. So if you put a lot of stuff on the outside, you probably won't have a lot of leftover room here. And typically I wouldn't want to put anything in these sort of zippered compartments on the bottom because they create bulges that make it a little bit harder to pack the way that I typically want to. But as we showed on the other side, if you want to just have one large compartment for your bag, you can just kind of roll this up and tuck it away and then you don't have to use it and you have a little bit simpler of a layout. One thing that I will say about this zipper for this flap that's a little bit annoying is that it does tend to get caught on some of these attachment points. So you just have to be a little bit careful as you're opening this all up and it might take a few tries to kind of get everything closed properly just because the zipper will continue to get caught. So because I don't open this flap all too much, I kind of preferred to keep this as two separate compartments. It wasn't too big of an issue, but just something to be aware of. Jumping into the flap of the main compartment, you have a laptop and tablet area. And so it has this nice Velcro closing here to help keep devices from falling out while you're laying this down flat. And so here at the top, there's just a very simple sleeve where you can reach down and grab your tablet. So plenty of space in this pocket for up to a full size 10 inch tablet. Currently what I have in here is just my iPad mini 2. And this sleeve isn't really padded or anything like that. It's just a simple area to add some separation to make it easy to grab your tablet. And then jumping into the laptop area itself, nice amount of padding here offered on the sleeve. I also really like that the compartment is elevated off the bottom of the ground, which is always gonna add a little bit of additional protection. And then it's also just a very large compartment. You'll definitely be able to fit up to a 15 inch laptop in here. It also comes up a nice amount. So if you have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably. Now the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the back. No sort of felt lining on the inside, but it is a pretty soft material. And again, it just offers a nice amount of padding and protection all around to keep your device safe while you're moving around throughout the day. The last thing I'll mention while we're in this main area is that Peak Design has included this snap system to help compress the bag down into a smaller size so that you can use it for your day to day. And so it can take a little bit of effort to get this snapped in. They have a snap on each side. And when you have the bag snapped down, it is supposed to be around 30 liters of capacity. So to me, this is still gonna be pretty big to carry this around throughout your day to day. On top of that, because this isn't that light of a bag, it just doesn't really make a great daily bag in my opinion. And it's just gonna be a little bit too big, a little bit too tall, especially if you have a smaller frame. So if you get caught in a pinch and you weren't able to pack a smaller daily bag, this might be an okay solution in the meantime. So really impressive job all around from Peak Design. They really threw pretty much everything that they could at this bag. And for the most part, they delivered a really solid 
solid experience. I do wish that they had trimmed back on some of the features to really focus on things like the harness and the back paneling to make it a little bit better of an experience. But if that's not as big of a deal to you, or maybe you don't find the back paneling and straps as uncomfortable as I did, this is still gonna be a really solid and versatile option that's gonna work great for one bag travel. And so to wrap up, it's been a really good experience testing out the Peak Design Travel Backpack. The bag is really well made, it has a nice look, and on top of that it just has tons of little features that I wouldn't even have thought I would like to have on a travel backpack like this. And so you can purchase this on the Peak Design site or on Amazon for about $300, which does make this one of the more expensive travel bags that we featured on the channel. On top of that, that doesn't include any of the accessories that Peak Design has showed up on their site, so the tech pouch, the wash pouch, any of the packing cubes, those are all sold separately. So if you wanted to get the whole system, that would definitely push the cost of the bag much higher than $300, probably closer to four or five hundred dollars if you wanted to get all the accessories at three hundred dollars for just the bag there is a little bit of sticker shock but you are getting something that's very well made and has a lot of unique features with that being said there are a lot of great travel bags that come in at less that are going to be great to keep in mind as i was testing this out the first bag that i thought of was the air travel pack 2 which is still kind of my all-around favorite travel backpack that bag is really well made it's comfortable i love the look that it has it's a great size and it comes in at a little bit less at 230 dollars the next bag that this made me think of was the Nomadic Travel Bag, the 40 liter duffel that we featured a few different times on the channel. For when I'm traveling with a larger travel bag and I need a little bit more space, that's still one of my favorite all around bags. It's very well made, it's comfortable, it has tons of great organizational options and features, and it also comes in at a lower price point at around $200 to $220. Another good option to keep in mind would be something like the standard Luggage Co. Travel Backpack, which we looked at a while back. That was just a very simple and durable bag that offered tons of space. It expanded from 35 to 45 liters, much like this bag here. And on top of that, it comes in at under $200. So if you're on a little bit of a tighter budget, but you still want a very solid travel backpack, that's gonna be a great option to check out. Another good option to keep in mind will be the Instinct Backpack, which we looked at a little while back. That was a very versatile travel backpack that was around 35 liters. And like the Peak Design bag, it actually has its own little travel system with a lot of great accessories, such as a packing cube, a camera cube, a wash bag. But the cool thing about the Instinct travel system is that you can actually get all the accessories with the bag at around $200. So if you like the idea of having an integrated travel system with accessories that all kind of work together, and you're looking to save a little bit of money, that's definitely gonna be another good option to keep in mind. The last option I'll mention here is the GORUCK GR2, which we've talked about a lot on the channel. That's one of my favorite all-time travel backpacks. It's super well made. I love the look. I love how the organization is laid out. It is also probably the most expensive travel backpack that we featured on the channel, coming in even more expensive than this bag here. And even though it doesn't have all the same bells and whistles that this bag has, you do have the ability to customize it with a variety of accessories due to the molly webbing that's all around the bag. And on top of that, it's gonna be a little bit more durable. So if you're just looking for one bag that you're gonna be able to have with you for many years to come, that's probably gonna be one of the best options out there. But with all that being said, the Peak Design Travel Backpack holds up really well to all those bags. It has a great design and a nice build quality. It is gonna be a little bit more expensive than a lot of the other great options that we've looked at. But for the most part, this is still a really solid travel option if you have a little bit of a higher budget or if you just like all the flexibility that the bag has to offer. It's still going to be a good option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think about the Peak Design Travel Backpack and the whole travel system that they've designed with all the different accessories. And as always, if you guys have any suggestions for other cool travel bags that I could feature on the channel, please let me know in the comments. And if you guys found this video useful, please go ahead and give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.